Good Thursday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to what's making news today, let's take a quick look outside our weather window from this afternoon as we head up north. And boy, was it has it ever been smoky up in the Methow Valley and Okanagan County area. And you can see by this shot, this is our Billy Goat camera, which is up. Uh, you can just see to the left center of your screen, Pateras right there where the Methow River runs into the Columbia. And boy, you can see that smoke bank just to the north. In fact, Winthrop, Washington, the worst air quality in all of the country today because of that Cub Creek and Cedar Creek fires there. And we'll talk more about that coming up. And as we take a look at our four day forecast, not much relief from fire conditions. In fact, very dry conditions the rest of this week and especially into this week as we are warming up as we get into the upcoming weekend with temperatures back in the mid and upper 90s. You can expect that for Saturday and Sunday. When will we receive relief? We'll talk about that coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. Leavenworth firefighters and a U.S. Forest Service crew kept a brush fire to a minimum in a popular city park yesterday. The team investigating a fatal 2020 shooting in which a Douglas County Sheriff's deputy killed a Wenatchee man has been turned over to the uh, county prosecutor. A 20-year-old Ellensburg man was hospitalized early this morning after he was hit by a vehicle while he apparently was walking on or along I-90. And Moses Lake man faces possible traffic charges after causing an I-90 accident that hospitalized two Issaquah residents yesterday. But first, our top story tonight. Strong winds caused the Cedar Creek fire near Mazama to grow by over 6,000 acres on Wednesday. And what's been the case all week? Heavy smoke in the area is hampering the ability for firefighters to attack the fire from the air. The fire has forced the closure of the North Cascades Highway since last week and threatened the community of Mazama. Spokesman Mark Rapp gives us the latest from this morning. The fire did uh, get very active last night. We had strong west winds and uh, it uh, lit it up there on uh, Virginian Ridge off from uh, off from McKinley Mountain there, uh, coming down the ridge line. Uh, highly visible fire right on the ridge line there. We have favorable condition, favor more favorable conditions today. The west wind is supposed to back off, and uh, so we expect that we don't see we won't see a lot of fire movement today but uh, we're just gonna see some more uh, fire activity. So the, because of the change conditions, we're gonna see more fire, um, but it's not gonna be rapidly spreading. Uh, as far as, so we're not, we're not uh, putting any line on, on uh, Virginian Ridge there. It's just too inaccessible. Um, we don't have the type of crews if we were to uh, do that, to, to work that line. So we're going back to where we can uh, work with what we got. Uh, as far as heavy equipment and the uh, limited uh, resources as far as hand crews go, uh, we'll continue to work this ground. Uh, at some point, we're going to have to uh, put some fire on the ground here uh, to try and keep this from, if it does continue to move down the slope and towards the uh, east, we will have to put some fire on the ground to try and check that up there. That's the long-term plan. Leavenworth firefighters and a U.S. Forest Service crew kept a brush fire to a minimum in a popular city park yesterday. The fire broke out just after 3 p.m. on Blackbird Island, part of Leavenworth's waterfront park complex. It started alongside one of the island's hiking trails and quickly spread through the undergrowth. Chelan County Fire District 3 crews had to pump water from the Wenatchee River, while Forest Service Crew 74 sent 20 members to dig a fire line. Assistant Chief Glenn Brodeset says the fire was contained to about 2,400 square feet. The incident is believed to be human-caused, possibly from a dropped cigarette. Well, the team investigating a fatal 2020 shooting in which a Douglas County Sheriff's deputy killed a Wenatchee man has turned over its report to the county prosecutor. Deputy Nick English shot and killed 29-year-old Thomas Mathis III while responding to a domestic disturbance 911 call in Rock Island. That happened back on April 21st of that year. At the time, police said Mathis was a guest in the home on Normal Lane. Police said at some point Mathis armed himself with a handgun. 
English was placed on administrative leave after the shooting, but has since returned to duty. Douglas County Prosecutor Gordon Edgar must determine whether the shooting was justified. Meanwhile, a 20-year-old Ellensburg man was hospitalized early this morning after he was hit by a vehicle while he was apparently walking on or along Interstate 90. The Washington State Patrol said they're now looking for the driver of the vehicle that hit Bradley Holt about 1.30 a.m. near the eastbound 106 on-ramp. Trooper John Bryant said Holt had earlier been told by a trooper to leave the on-ramp and complied, but apparently made his way back to the interstate. After being found on the right shoulder of I-90, Holt was transported to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle with a broken leg. Bryant said it's possible that if Holt was hit by a semi, the driver was unaware of the accident. Troopers are looking for possible surveillance footage from nearby truck stops to get a better idea of what happened. Bryant said Holt has not been, quote, super cooperative, unquote. Well, a Moses Lake man faces possible traffic charges after causing an I-90 accident that hospitalized two Issaquah residents yesterday. State troopers say 78-year-old Peter C. Hammer improperly tried to merge into a left lane near milepost 68 and caused a passing vehicle to strike the roadside barrier and flip. A 48-year-old Issaquah man and his 14-year-old son were taken to Harborview Medical Center with injuries. Police say charges are pending. Well, coming up next, keeping COVID-19 out of correction facilities has proved to be a challenge in Washington. Washington State's plastic bag ban, which was originally scheduled to begin at the first of this year, will now go into effect October 1st. And for the first time, cameras have captured video of a bear using one of the state's wildlife crossings on Interstate 90. We'll show you. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. At Wenatchee Power Sports, we proudly offer the Polaris product line. Polaris builds the highest quality side-by-side -side in the industry, with off-road capability that's second to none. The Polaris pre-order program allows customers to purchase the vehicle they want without having to select from limited dealer inventory. The Wenatchee Valley has year-round access to some of the best ORV trails in the Northwest. Start your adventure here at Wenatchee Power Sports. Hi, Stephen Devilbus here, Branch Manager of Beneficial and Home Care. We are an equal opportunity employer and we do not discriminate in employment or services. It is our mission to maximize our clients' physical health and sense of mental well-being while remaining in the comfort of their home. We are currently seeking professional caregivers who share our mission to help our clients live safely and comfortably at home. Call Beneficial and Home Care. Schedule your interview today, 509-663-7900. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award-winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Welcome back. In another news, keeping COVID-19 out of corrections facility proved a challenge in Washington. The state DOC has reported 6,200 cases among prison inmates and 13 deaths. In Okanagan County, an outbreak in December affected 11 detainees and four staff members. But the Chelan County Regional Justice Center has largely managed to dodge the virus. In tonight's feature story, NCW Life's Jefferson Robbins asked director Chris Sharp how that was accomplished and how he's keeping detainees safe. Uh, we have not had one positive case in our adults in custody. Uh, we have had a couple staff members, but obviously staff are out and about, and usually the you know the people who are incarcerated are in jail. Once they once we feel like that they've uh, done their quarantine that we've had, we're, we feel safe moving around with other people. 
uh, early on, we implemented protocols right away. We isolated every person being booked into jail. We obviously had to put booking restrictions in because we only have about 38 isolation cells, so we could only take so many people a day in those cells. We started out with, the recommendation was isolate for 14 days. There was no way our small jail could do that. We would have been closed every day because we would have booked 15 and been closed. So then we went to seven. Seven wasn't working for us, so we went to three. Um, and then if anybody still had any of the symptoms at their 72 hour mark, meta staff was checking them and then they would stay longer. They, some people did go through, individuals did go through seven to 10 to 14 days of isolation just based on we thought, you know, uh, we did send some of those out to get tested. I think we sent out about 25 people that our provider at the time thought this person needs to be tested to make sure and every one of them came back negative. They didn't have it. So they either had the flu or they had something else going on. Vaccinations we've been doing for four months. So uh, the clinic, uh, uh, Billy Tlaxon, our medical uh, provider, she goes around and she asks people if they want the vaccination, uh, she gets them signed up, and then the clinic uh, actually sends volunteers in, or the, the health department sends people in, and then they, they get the vaccine. We, we didn't really want to do the, the Pfizer or the Moderna because it was a two shot, and some of our people don't stay that long to get the second shot. So we were, we were pushing for the Johnson & Johnson, of course, you know what happened with the Johnson Johnson early on, so it, it kind of put a damper on it at the beginning but it was reapproved, and so that's what we've been doing. And some people do get incarcerated in the middle of their shots, and so they'll tell us, and so we, we line that up. If they, if they had a shot a week before they got in, they're gonna be here for two weeks, we get them their second shot. I will tell you, it hasn't been a big, um, it's not very popular, in, 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 uh, we, most of the time we have 10 people sign up, and when the health department shows up, two people will actually take it, for whatever reasons. I mean, again, personal choice. Um, so when we're in there, they say they want it, and then when it comes down to pulling them out to get it, um, a lot of them have declined. I think we've probably vaccinated like maybe 25 people in them. And we're gonna run that through August for sure with the health department. COVID's still out there. I mean, it hasn't been eradicated. And you know, so we're still trying to keep our people that are incarcerated safe, but our staff safe too from that. Washington State's plastic bag ban, which was originally scheduled to begin at the first of this year, will go into effect October 1st. The State Department of Ecology announced the new date yesterday. The bag ban was passed by the legislature in 2020 and prohibits the distribution of single-use plastic carryout bags by grocery stores, restaurants, retail stores, and small vendors. Businesses are required to charge customers eight cents for each uh, compliant plastic or paper bag they use. Implementation of the ban was delayed by Governor Jay Inslee, who cited the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, as we take you to break, for the first time, cameras have captured video of a bear using one of the state's wildlife crossings on Interstate 90. The black bear can be seen using a wildlife underpass Tuesday uh, to make its way past the interstate. Very cool. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. What is home? A place to gather, a place to grow, provide shelter for the ones we love, eat, drink, restore, build trust. It's a place to rest when the work day is done. A place to find quiet after a night of good fun. What an honor we have at Guild to help own, finance, create, pave the way to live in home. Are you a take charge kind of person? Consider a career as a health unit coordinator. You'll work to keep health facilities running efficiently by coordinating medical providers, patients, and departments. The Charter College Certificate in Health Unit Coordinator program can get you up to speed on basic patient care, health records management, health and safety procedures, and medical billing. And the 10-month online program includes a computer you keep. Get started at chartercollege.edu, where we work to get you to work. Traditional values and innovation in honoring the life of each family we serve is part of the ministry of Heritage Memorial Chapel. Our staff is committed to walk with your family with compassion through this time of grief. We are here to help and here to serve the right kind of help when you need it most. Heritage Memorial Chapel.
At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. DA Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at DA Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Time now for our weekly Pause for Pets feature from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Tonight, NCW Life's Megan McPherson introduces us to Taylor the dog. NCW Life Channel. We are here with Jenny, the volunteer coordinator at the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, and Taylor's joining us this week. Can you tell us about Taylor? I sure can. So Taylor is young. She has quite a bit of energy. Um, she's very sweet. She's been with us for a while and actually been in the behavior program because she's pretty excitable on leash when she sees other dogs, but it's something we've worked hard with here, and she's doing really good. Um, one of her really strong traits that she's awesome at is she's kind of our playgroup rock star. She plays with a lot of our males that otherwise wouldn't have a friend, so she does great with other dogs. Um, she's just awesome with them, kind of is able to let them know the boundaries and everything. Um, the only thing she can't be around is like small furry critters like bunnies, chickens, um, cats. So she'd probably need a home with a fenced yard just because those kind of things are a little bit too tempting for Taylor. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, she'd make a great dog for somebody that was active and wanted to have kind of a active life with her, where she gets to be a very big part of your life too. <laughs> Come here, sit down. And how's she with kids? Um, so far, I think she's pretty good. Well, that's something we haven't really tested out. Um, so they'd want to bring their kids here yeah. to see her. She does have a lot of energy. Um, and so that would just be something for to be mindful of. And what's the adoption process? So Taylor, because she was in our behavior program, somebody that's interested in her just needs to actually email Karen, our behavior manager, um, and that is on the website. So if they go onto our website and under her profile, Taylor, it'll have the email that they need to contact Karen at. The Wenatchee Valley Humane Society is located at 1474 South Wenatchee Avenue and is open Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchehumane.org. All right, time now for a quick check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. And today was a beautiful day, temperatures around 86 or so. And as we get into tonight, we are going to see mostly clear skies. Also seasonably mild temperatures, once again, lower to mid 60s. And boy, did that feel good this morning, didn't it? As we end our week on Friday, expect sunshine. Temperatures once again about normal, and that's around 90 degrees this time of year. So that's what we can expect for tomorrow. And then Saturday, the heat is on. Much warmer with high temperatures in the upper 90s on Saturday. Here's that ridge up and over us again, and that's what's going to bring us all all of those warm temperatures. There is an area of low pressure that's kind of guiding that warm air at us. And Sunday, we are talking temperatures near 100 degrees, maybe a little bit of a breeze to help out things, but it's going to be a hot one as we end our weekend. And then as we kick off another week uh, work week on Monday, mostly sunny, maybe some high clouds moving our way. It's still going to remain hot with high temperatures in the 90s. And we're talking upper 90s for Monday. We will slightly cool down at the end of our forecast Tuesday and Wednesday, but not much. We're talking mostly sunny skies with temperatures in the mid 90s. But low pressure out of the Pacific has taken the place of high pressure. That could change our weather, but not on Wednesday. It could be later in the week for that with mostly sunny skies expected for Wednesday. Still hot with high temperatures once again hot in the mid 90s. Take a look at your seven day forecast now and tonight we'll drop down to 62 degrees, 89 tomorrow. Here's our hot stretch of days, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, mid to upper 90s, maybe 100 on Sunday, and then 95 on Tuesday, and 96, your high temperature on Wednesday. 
And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight. Sports Report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Dr. Divis is proud to announce that Dr. Taylor Pedigo has joined the Wenatchee Dental Arts team. After much research, Dr. Pedigo chose Wenatchee Dental Arts as the place to practice and Wenatchee as the place to live. Dr. Pedigo is an honors graduate of the UCLA School of Dentistry and has made our valley his home. Wenatchee Dental Arts offers complete comprehensive dentistry from routine teeth cleaning to sedation dentistry. Wenatchee Dental Arts now offering two dentists to serve all your dental needs. Call for your appointment today. The Tan Republic Bronze Without Borders membership is our best membership to date. Discounted monthly dues, access to over 65 locations, 25% off all products, discounted upgrades and spray tanning, members only specials, and of course, we treat you like a VIT. Very important tanner. Ask your certified Smart Tan Associate how you can sign up for a Bronze Without Borders membership program today and save. Tan beautiful. Tan Republic. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Live channel. And a happy Thursday to you amid much fanfare during a 90-minute live event on ESPN2 yesterday at Gasworks Park. Seattle Kraken announced its first 30 players taken in the NHL expansion draft. Of course, the telecast included some flying fish at Pike's Place Market, views from atop the Space Needle, and uh, selections from all over the city of Seattle. Uh, it also included a sneak peek here of the climate change arena. Uh, Seattle sports celebrities, including Gary Payton and Sean Kemp, also included uh, Marshawn Lynch and others. The announcement of selection from atop Mount Rainier to inside the Seattle Aquarium. The event had a definite Seattle flair to it. In the end, the most notable names of those chosen included 22-year veteran defenseman from Calgary, Mark Giordano, Back-to-back -back, uh, Stanley Cup winner for Tampa Bay from Tampa Bay, Yanni Gord, and Florida netminder Chris Dreger. The roster includes only two players over 30 years of age and 16 that are under the age of 25. Seattle also has the second overall pick in tomorrow's NHL draft. Well, the Mariners return home from a 3-2 and two road trip after falling to the Rockies in Colorado yesterday. 6-3 to three, the final. Uh, Ke uh, Keenan Middleton was uh, greeted rudely on a bullpen day as the Seattle starter gave up five runs on five hits in one inning. The first inning of the five hits on the day for Seattle, three of which were solo home runs from Kyle Seeger, Luis Torrens, and Mitch Hanniger. Seeger jumping on the first pitch, a deep drive out to deep center field, and it's gone over the wall. The big wall, no less, for a home run. Mariners start their comeback right away. Lead off home run, Kyle Seeger, his 18th. Torrens with a blast out to left. There goes another. Luis Torrens, his home run tear cannot be stopped. Number 11 on the campaign, and his ninth since coming back to the ball club. Hanniger. Blast deep to left. Mitch Hanniger goes on top of the walkway tarp. Third home run today for the Mariners. That was shot from a cannon. Number 23 for Hanniger. The game also marked the Major League debut of pitcher Darren McCacken, the 25-year-old out of Long Beach State, wound up pitching five innings, allowing one run on no hits with three walks. Manager Scott Service was quick to point out the pitching of McCacken. During the game today, certainly uh, what DMAC was able to do, uh, first time ever in the big leagues, and, and to go out there and uh, throw five innings like that at Coors Field, uh, what an effort. Uh, heck of a job by him, and, and uh, yeah, that's who he is. He throws a lot of strikes, keeps the ball on the ground, uh, did a heck of a job there. Obviously, uh, you know, we, we couldn't get through the first. That was, that was the one that hurt us today. With, with Keenan, I actually didn't think Keenan threw the ball that bad. He didn't expand the zone. You know, give us two strike hits, and then uh, swing the, the walk uh, to Crown before the, the bases clearing double uh, to put the big number up there for them. But uh, uh, it's a new spot. You know, when you're in these days, uh, bullpen days, you're trying to come up with a plan. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But oftentimes you're putting guys in positions they, they haven't been in a lot. So, uh, uh, but I, I give. Uh, 
Kakak got a ton of credit. Uh, it was an awesome outing. Uh, we get five innings here and, and really, you know, allowed us to save our bullpen. And, you know, we're still in the ball game. You know, we had a few homers there, uh, but shutting that team down in this ballpark after the start we got off to, it was a really good job. Seattle returns home to host the Oakland A's in the first of four games at T-Mobile Park as Chris Flexen faces Sean Manea first pitch tonight at 7:10. That's on Root Sports across the rest of the American League West Wednesday. Robbie Grossman, Zach Short, and Akil Badu each homered in Detroit's 4-2 win over Texas. And in Houston, Cesar Hernandez's solo home run in the top of the seventh was the difference as Cleveland topped the Astros 5-4. As Oakland comes to town today, the Athletics trail Houston by three games in the American League West and are three and a half in front of Seattle in that wild card race. Well, the Wenatchee Apple Sox broke up a no-hitter with a two-run sixth inning but couldn't muster enough to beat Walla Walla last night, falling to the Sweets 8-2. Apple Sox starter Lance Mercado was solid through six innings, allowing just two runs on five hits with seven strikeouts. But it was the bullpen that couldn't hold up, according to the voice of the Apple Sox, Joel Norman. Well, the Apple Sox dropped game two of their three-game set against the Walla Walla Sweets by a score of 8-2 on Wednesday night at Borleski Stadium. Wenatchee was being no hit through the first five innings of play and finally got their first knock in the sixth and would add their second a batter later. A two RBI double by Michael O'Hara tied the ball game up, but the Apple Sox allowed three runs to score in the seventh and three more in the eighth as the bullpen faltered late and the Swedes have tied up the series this week. The rubber match is on Thursday at 635. Jacob Hughes will get the start for Wenatchee. And with your Apple Sox update, I'm Joel Norman. Thank you much, Joel. Michael O'Hara and Luke Stuka ended up with a couple of hits apiece for Wenatchee in the loss last night. Just a reminder, the Sox wrap up that series tonight in Walla Walla. They'll be back home tomorrow to start a three-game weekend series against Yakima Valley. We'll have the game live tomorrow here on the NCW Life Channel with a pregame at 6.30. Uh, in other West Coast League baseball last night, Wilson Weber's two-run single highlighted a three-run first inning for Callitz, who beat Portland 9-1. Weber and Brock Mortensen each drove in three runs apiece for the Bears. John Peck and Kobe Morales continue to swing hot bats for Ridgefield as each were three for five with three ribbies in the Raptors 8-2 win over Port Angeles. Aaron Plant's sacrifice for RBI fly in the bottom of the eighth was the winner for Yakima Valley. The Pippins knock off Ben 6-5. Mason Marenko three for four at the plate with two RBIs to lead Yakima Valley. The win was Yakima Valley's 20th of the season and proved the Pippins to 5-3 and three in the second half. The WCL standings, everyone else is chasing Walla Walla for that second half playoff spot with Bellingham trailing by a game. Port Angeles a game and a half. Wenatchee now two games back. Ridgefield two and a half clear of Cowlitz right now for that second half playoff spot in the South. Midweek series wrap up tonight. Wenatchee at Walla Walla, Ridgefield at Port Angeles, Cowlitz hosting Portland, and Ben at Yakima Valley. That's sports. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Coombs for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thank you very much, Grant. Tomorrow, Friday, is National Hot Dog Day, the all-American food staple, the hot dog. And in honor of that, tomorrow, on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, I'm going to attempt to break the world hot dog eating record. I'm going to try it right here on this program for National Hot Dog Day. Tune in, 7 o'clock tomorrow. And Grant, I need your credit card. i got to go to the store and buy a bunch of hot dogs. I'll see you tomorrow. Grant, back to you. No problem, Dan. Thank you very much. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.
have a fun or interesting video you'd like to see featured here on the NCW Life channel? It's easy. All you have to do is send us an email at newsphotos at ncwlife.com.